Welcome to Catch This. This is Nook, and uh, I've got with me today Kick and Channing from Practical Paracord. Today we're going to do part B. I don't know if we're going to call this episode 5B or episode 6 or what we're calling it, but uh, we are going to talk about the internationals. Uh, We both were there at the international competition in Ibiza this year, so I, I guess we should go straight into it. What do you think, Channing? Hell yeah, sounds perfect, man. Sounds perfect. You know, was going out there, had some uh, mix-ups in the beginning, you know, all the COVID regulations and stuff, but I finally got there a little late. And when I pulled up in the hotel, you know, I see an old kick right there, and I was like, it was pretty cool finally meeting you in person for the first time. You know, we talked so much, and it was pretty cool. And that's something I still haven't done. It was funny when I was explaining to people that, oh yeah, I'm running this podcast now on Sling, like uh, with my co-host in America that I've never actually met in person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just setting you up for disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll meet one day. Hopefully we we'll get something good online together. You know what I'm saying? Until we can meet up in person. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, if we want to get into it, you know, we first got out there the first day. And uh, it was, they told us about the little practice area. So a good way to work, work off jet lag and loosen up a little bit, you know, me kicking Ryan. Shout outs to Ryan. He came with me from Idaho. He did pretty good. And uh, so we just went to the practice area and played around with a little bit. Um, and it was, the, the area was so cool because they had, they had the Valeri target with big net in the back. It was, it was pretty cool, man. It was a good place. You could throw rocks. We almost bust a few cars up, but they were just parked in the wrong spot, <laughs> if you ask me. We didn't, we didn't actually break any cars, luckily, so we didn't... This this was all in San Jose, uh, or San Josep, I think is the is the name, uh, training spot. But uh, speaking of breaking things, you did a, quite a number on that target. <laughs> See, what happened was, <laughs> I learned... Uh, I figured out out there in a beef of that I use I'm better with bigger rocks to start off with. And once I warm up, I can go to smaller rocks. But I got up there, say the first round when we first started practicing, and like my first two, three rounds, I didn't really hit nothing. I was like, you know, let me try these big rocks. And like first round, I hit like two diamonds. And then I kept doing it, kept doing it. So, you know, that was the first day. And then the next day, everybody went to a, a, a like a demonstration or a school to show kids i guess how to sling and the history of it which is what i was thinking so i was like instead of doing that i'm gonna go practice all day you know because i'm coming here to, to play i'm interested in the history and stuff but you know i gotta warm up and get right but come to find out they was throwing tennis balls all day and we had a tennis ball tournament right after so i kind of dropped the ball right there but anyway i was out there literally probably about six hours just throwing and but one person throwing, you get a lot of throws in. And with the rocks I was using, I broke it three times. First, it came off the hinge, so I propped it up with a board. Then when I hit it right in the middle, the well broke, so the whole Dana came out the board. So I shoved that back in there. And then once I hit it again, the whole thing came down. And honestly, I was nervous as hell because I was like, oh, shoot, we got to go throw right here today. You know, we're about to, this is going to be in the tournament. But uh, nobody freaked out on me. Everybody was cool with it. And with the rain, we ended up not going back there anyway. But uh, it, it felt it felt pretty good busting up a target up in Spain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you left your mark. It's because uh, that was the thing. Like, we, we were there practicing on the uh, 14th when we f- – uh, no, that was on the 13th. And then the 14th, we were practicing again. Yeah, with the, with the Austrian team. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because on the 15th, we uh, – went around to these two different schools and were like basically showing off slinging to the kids there, like uh, just throwing at a target using tennis balls. So we were, I was slinging there for like easily five hours or something, tennis balls. And I was, I was using a uh, Channing smiley sling, which he got me. Thanks again for that. Uh, the Finnish flag colors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> <laughs> And I was getting, I was getting pretty good, I have to say. In those practices, I was doing pretty okay. Like I was hitting fairly consistent Dianas with it, and I was just there singing the entire time. 
probably a little too much because when it came to the actual competition that day, it was um, at this uh, botanical gardens in San Rafael. That competition didn't actually count for the overall championship. That was just mostly because the uh, other island uh, slingers, the slingers from the other Balearic Islands, weren't able to come over that early uh, because that was on the Friday. So they were all still working and stuff like that. So that that competition didn't count for the overall, but we did some slinging there and I didn't do all that great, really. I I can't remember my scores now, but it doesn't really matter because they weren't that high up. So I did okay, but not as well as I wanted to. The gardens were nice too. I, I, I didn't go to the school, so let's see if we can bring it back just a little bit so I can get some of this experience. Because like this whole thing of like going out there and teaching kids how to sling and stuff, I'm kind of interested in doing that back home. So like, how did that go? Like, uh, I'm sure Christian Christian talk. It was it was less um, actually teaching the kids. It was more just showing them. So we were just doing rounds of uh, I think it was was it five each again? I think or maybe it wasn't even that. I think it was more informal than that. It was just you grabbed a couple balls and just did some slinging and then like let the next person take over. So it wasn't really. It was just sort of us showing them um we didn't do any actual teaching um i think mostly because of covid regulations we were kind of slightly keeping our distance from them and wearing masks and everything while in the school area uh, in previous years they've done more actual like teaching um but this was more just sort of a demonstration but um it was it was really fun like uh the kids were really getting into it as well like i was kind of expecting us to just be stood there singing to like a sea of silent faces <laughs> like um <laughs> but but they they were really games where they were like cheering and like uh, it's, like for me I was kind of like I was really trying to put on a performance and they were shouting like Finlandia Finlandia oh, <laughs> <laughs> cheering me on cheering uh, other people on and uh, yeah it was it was it was good fun but yeah it was more just of a demonstration so it was just just yeah informal slinging really that's cool man that's cool that's one thing I learned out there too man everybody everybody shouts out you know looks out for you you know. Um, it's it's a competition, but everybody's got each other's back. That's what that, that's what I really like about it. But uh, uh, one one little notch I want to put out there before we you know go into like the gardens or whatever. On the practice field, I, I got to practice with Uber. Shout out to Uber. To me, he's the number one slinger. But even on the practice field, I felt like I did better than him a lot of rounds. So it's like I'm 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 more hopeful. But next year, if I can get my calm, my nerves together, I could do a lot better. You know what I'm saying? So the, that practice field day with the Austria team really gave me a boost of encouragement. But uh, yeah, that, yeah that, that that was super fun. Yeah, g- getting to actually like uh, sling with other people is just is the best thing about it, I think. And again, like you said, like everyone over there and all the international group coming over, all like such nice people that you know will help you all give you tips and advice and and you know uh, uh, even though we're supposed to be all in competition against each other in a way everyone's like rooting for each other and yeah it's it's really it's really good yeah and they learn a lot i learned a lot on the field with christian yeah it it's definitely a different thing like say the difference between the practice and the actual slinging it's it's a very different thing and like i said with the botanical garden i didn't do so great uh despite all the practice for that the entire day slinging tennis balls i like you you were off slinging rocks which you know was a bit of a change uh when you came to do the tennis balls but even even though i was slinging tennis balls a day i still didn't do so do so great so it's a very different thing being in competition um i think yeah yeah when you said you learned a lot, are you talking about just the culture or are you talking about slinging itself as well? Uh, the history, the culture, um, uh, where some of the slingers are, just a, a lot of stuff I didn't really know about. Um, but I remember like every time Christian talked, I was like, oh, OK, I didn't know that. I mean, uh, one thing I did learn was like the, the most slingers don't have a knot on the end of their sling. Now, that's that was a new thing. Uh, everybody was saying like the knot will catch up with with the uh, with the projectile and throw it off, which you know I it happens, but it, it doesn't happen if you got a nice tight slit. But a lot a lot of historical stuff basically, and just where people come from and all all that good stuff, you know. But uh, it's it's crazy because like I know a lot about slinging. 
But then you start seeing all these different styles and different this and that. It's amazing. Like even even when I try to teach people how to sling now, I'm gonna try to teach them the underarm throw first because I seen like most of the women did that, and you could tell like like even like the the old lady that was just hitting bulls out after bulls out. You know, once you get that hang of it, then I think you progress to over the top. But um. Yeah, that's just some little things I learned. When we was at the garden that first day, you know, like Kick said, practice and play is totally different. And honestly, when we got out there, yeah, it, it was a little nerve wracking. It's a little shaky, you know. My uh, I, I wasn't too impressed with my first round, and they scored hardly nothing. And then when when my boy Ryan got up there, like he just let it all out. He just went out there and started throwing that ball, you know. And once I seen that, it's like, yeah, let me stop playing around and just throw it. And my second round was a lot better because, you know, I loosened up and I just said, like, you know what? Just throw it fast. You miss it, you miss it. But if you hit it, it's going to – people going to open their eyes. And that that was one progression of being in a tournament-type situation. Yeah, it's it's very psychological to, to actually stand in front of a target surrounded by a load of people that – like for me at least, a lot of them are a lot better slingers than I am, and like to show what you're worth. <laughs> like, to, uh, I think I scored like one point in the first round and a second point in the second round. I think it was like what I got. I think two or three points. It I didn't do all that great, but it, I I have noticed that that is kind of my problem is that when I actually have to do it for a competition. I'm not so great in practice. I can usually hit the target at least, if not Diana's. But it is just, it's a different thing. It's a very different feeling when you're surrounded by a load of people. Even if they are cheering you on, that's kind of more pressure. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And when I went out there, I felt like, you know, a lot of people see my channel, so a lot of people knew me. So I felt like even when I hit the board, people were cheering like I hit the middle, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of gave me that extra pressure. But, you know, when you did good, it, it felt great, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was tight. And, uh... We actually, I walked the gardens a little bit, and this is just a little Louisiana thing. Like, almost the whole time in Spain, it's almost all the same wild, uh, plant life, you know, pretty much wildlife. And while we're in the botanical gardens, though, there was like a little swamp area where there's like a, alle- a fake alligator with like a bullfrog. I'm like, if that ain't Louisiana, I don't know what is. So I literally, I looked it up. And the last time there was a gay alligator in Spain was like 16 million years ago. So <laughs> it, it was it was just crazy seeing that, you know, like I felt like I was home, you know. <laughs> so the next day uh, was kind of more the actual competition. Like that was that was actually counted for the overall where we went and we we threw was it the, we went first to go to uh, visit a museum. I think that was was that that day. Yeah, it was that day. Before we before we jump to that day, one last little thing I want to throw in there. Yeah. According, according, I wasn't impressed by my score or nothing, but according to when we came back from the gardens, everybody said me and Ryan time for first. So that was a morale booster the first day, even though we didn't get targets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But that, that's what I hear. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see no paperwork on it. But yeah, then the next day, you know, I was like, you know, what? I'm jumping on the bus. I'm not going to miss out on no uh, target practice or nothing. And then they would go to the museum. And uh, we were like two hours late, right? When we got to the tournament. We we turned up quite late because I think we went to the wrong place first. And then we eventually found our way to the right museum and then went around that. And then by the time we got from there to the place, we were actually throwing rocks for the competition. We were kind of late, so that wasn't <laughs> the best timing, but that's usually how it goes on these trips is that there's usually, if, if we're not running late, it's not normal, really. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they, that's what they said back out there all the time, Spanish or Spain time. <laughs> but, but yeah, then once we got there, cause the first day, like I said, it was at the gardens, it didn't really count. I think uh, most of the islanders were at work. But when we got to this spot, this is where everybody was. I mean, everybody, even seeing old Louie out there, you know, big shout out to Louie. You know, he's, uh, I was acting like a little fanboy when I seen him, but ran up to him, shake his hand and stuff. But after he shot, he shot out, you know, so I didn't really get to talk to him after that, but that was pretty cool. 
you know, seen uh Molesto out there. You know, he got he got a video out there on YouTube that got like 1.2 million views of around in 2015. And he also did good out there today. There was um David Morningstar's video. Uh it's I think it's called something like Balearic Slinging or Balearic a Balearic Slinger or something like that. It's very it's a quite simple title, but yeah, it's it's him getting a three Dianas, I believe, in in a competition in twenty fifteen and which is very good. And, and just for those that don't know, uh Louis is Louis Pons uh, Livermore, who you've probably seen if you've been on YouTube looking at slinging videos, he has the video where he hits a watermelon very fast and very hard because that's how he slings. He really like sends those rocks flying. Really shows how dangerous this thing can be uh, in the right hand. So, so you know, I just I just realized <clears throat> some people may not know what a Diana is. That's a good point. We should probably talk about the target a little bit. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the way that the Balearic target is set up is that it's um, a wooden board, uh, 120 centimeters like square, and then in the center is a metal plate that's 50 centimeters uh, diameter, um, and that is called the Diana. And for hitting the wooden board, you get one point, and for hitting the Diana, the metal disc, you get two points. So that's how uh, how they score the uh, the points. And for uh, I don't know if it's exactly accurate, but for you know, it's Americans, it's more like a four by four foot board, like a, a piece of two by four. You just cut it in half, and then the middle piece is about twenty inches round. Yeah, I should I should say that yeah, the 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 other the other measurements as well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so for stones it's usually 30 meters or um uh, around uh, no, sorry, uh 30 meters for longer distance is sometimes done in some of the clubs, but uh 20 meters um for the international competition and for most of the big competitions and then for tennis balls it's usually around 13 meters it's a little closer um because tennis balls just don't fly quite as well as rocks so it's a little more difficult yeah yeah and uh you know the rocks are diff- the rocks are a little more difficult because you don't know what size you're getting i mean they write down on the rocks about the weight but you know tennis balls is the same thing the rocks that's where it gets a little fishy but you know, that's the name of the game yeah they can really vary a lot in how they fly and how much they weigh, and you kind of have to just go and grab the rocks that you that you want, which was kind of the the thing that really tripped a lot of us in the international group up was when we went to this first competition slinging rocks because we arrived late. We only had one practice round, uh, well, one practice rock each, <laughs> but we only had the one throw, and then we had to go straight into actually competing. So we did not get much time to warm up at all, or really any. So it was it was kind of difficult going in so cold. Like uh, we just had to pick the rocks that we thought would probably be good. We had the practice earlier um, in the previous days, but for that day itself, we we just had to go and do our best, basically. And you know, uh, a lot of us, a lot of people didn't like it. Everybody, you know, we want to warm up, but you know, the traditional thing is, you know, if you hunting, you know, you ain't gonna have time to practice before an animal pulls up in front of you. You know, and with that being said, I'll talk about my boy uh, Loki. Right, Loki's a Balearic sling out there, and he got up to the he got up to the mound. I think on his third rock, he hit the Diana. And then it came off the it came it came off the uh, screw. It broke, so he had to wait. I mean, it was about ten minutes before they fixed it, and he got to throw just those two rocks. And you know, when you sling it, once you find the target, that's when you want to keep throwing until you fall off of it. So, you know, it it, it worked all it works all the way around. Even though, even though I feel like a competition, it could have some more where you throw like ten times in a row just to get in and out your groove. Because I've seen it at the practice field a lot. I do like the traditional way they do it because it's really a lot about nerves. Because I come home and I play, I practice like we play, and I score real good almost every time. So it's like ninety percent of it is 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 mental. It's all nerves. Yeah, yeah. It it does kind of like kind of simulate that uh, thing of you know if you're in a battle or hunting, you do just have to you have to be a good slinger all the time not just when you're feeling it so it does kind of test that exactly exactly and uh that's one thing i'm practicing on this year is i'm uh, trying to get people together 
So all year long, I'm practicing in front of a group of people. So we'll go out there. I don't have that in the back of my mind and, you know, see what happens next year. Um, so yeah, with the, with the rocks, Louis again actually did very well there. He, he came third with seven points and one Diana. Uh, there was a f- uh, from Ibiza and um, uh, somewhere else in Spain, uh, some other people won those. There wasn't any international winners, uh, unfortunately, for the Rocks for that first competition. What did, uh, what did Uber, Uber want some? I think he won later, because after, after the Rocks, we then went to... Uh, this sort of open field area, sort of in the middle of this small town in San Carlos, where we then uh, then we were using tennis balls, and I think he Uve did very well there, and that's where he won uh, second place. That was that was fun. We got to go eat, we went and eat, ate some uh, paella, which again it looked real cajun. What you thought about that? It was good. Yeah, yeah, it was real good food. Yeah, I got to get you some more gumbo from down here. I bet you really like that. Because it's damn little stuff we eat. You know, they have crabs in it, shrimp in it. You know, all kind of seafood. And uh, I think you'll like it too, Nook. It was some good stuff. I love Cajun food. Oh, ça c'est bon. <laughs> we went out there, you know, even had us a bottle of wine on the table. So, you know, got a few sips of wine in. So the next game, I was a little <laughs> more relaxed. You know, so... Went out there. That's when that's when I started scoring points. Boy, I was like, "All right, y'all can watch watch this, y'all." <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, and I end up I end up making third place. And I ain't gonna lie, I was so giddy. I was so happy to actually win a trophy because after you know the rock cold thing, I was a little defeated. I was like, "Man, I can't believe." You know, I kind of got my head a little bit. But once we got to the tennis balls, everything started to get come together. Um, and even that day, like even the rounds. My third place round was still, I should have did better. I think the sec, my second go up was like four points. The first one was a lot. But, but yeah, loosened up a little bit, had that, got the uh, trophy ceremony, grabbed the wrong trophy off the table. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Like when Channing went up, uh, he just grabbed the first trophy that he saw on the table rather than the one that was supposed to be handed to him. So uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny to see. But uh, but yeah, you you did win third place, which is really impressive. Like considering this was your first time out, like you, I mean, you've done way better than me in uh, my first competition. So it was great to see see you bringing home some silver so early. Uh, yeah, thank. You. It also sounds like your uh, your plan failed because uh, after we we heard in the the pre interview about uh, how much practice Channing had had, uh, Kick and I were were talking in secret Channing and uh, hatched a plan to keep you out all night drinking so that uh, you wouldn't do as well in the competition so that Kick would have a chance. <laughs> and it sounds sounds like that backfired. Yeah, that yeah, backfired, that, yeah it definitely backfired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. But yeah, like like I cause I think the the first interview or whatever, I was like, you know, I'm going for gold, going for first. But once you get out there, you you know, you see you gotta have a good round and you see all these slangers that's just doing I mean, you look it over, they got this this older lady, you know, and she's making all these points. It's like, good lord. Then you look over and see this old man making all these points and then these young kids, it's like everybody's good, you know. Even if people ain't the best, everybody's good. And I don't know one thing I want to go. I want to talk about because I don't think I don't think I even talked about him on my channel. But uh, old Chica man, there's a guy out there from the UK, and he just learned how to sling while we was practicing, and then he played in the competition. And for the rocks, he even scored two points. You know what I'm saying? When a guy with under a hundred throws. That was super impressive to me. And who else impressed me was uh Diego and his wife that day. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many good slingers out there, old, young people that didn't sling. Like, it's an environment that is it's just too good. To, it feels too good to be true. Yeah. You know, like, because y'all know how it is. Not too many. We always talk about it. Not too many people around want to sling. But when you go out there and everybody else is professional slingers, like, this is what they do. It, it, it's crazy. 
speaking of Diego, um, he actually won the uh, the tennis ball competition. Like you came third, and then Uve came a second with uh, thirteen points, and with, of three of which were Diana's. And then Diego also got thirteen points, but he got four Diana, so took the um, the first place. It's Diego Comuna- Comunas. Um, who is a master sling maker. There's some uh, very old videos now of him making uh, slings on on YouTube. Um, But he's like, I'm not entirely sure how old he is, but in his 70s at least. And uh, he slings very well, very like he he makes it really look effortless, but he's very accurate and does get a lot of power despite almost little movement. It just seems to be all coming from just a very short movement. He can really throw them out there. Yeah, he's he's really 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 good. And and that that kind of brings it back to uh like what I say all the time, like once you learn to use your whole body, you know, you're really not, you know, you could sling at an old age and sling like you barely even doing something and throwing it fast and accurate. And I definitely got one of his slings. He was probably the only person out there that people said get one of his slings. So I went get one and it's impressive. Yeah, I've I've got one of his from the last year when I when I went, I was very quick to get get one off him. So both of you came back with a lot of stuff. Can you talk about kind of the the culture and trading and you know, hell yeah you know, that that element of it of coming home with a bunch of new slings and uh, looking at other people's sling designs and so on. Uh, how does that go when you show up? It seems like everybody's just giving everybody stuff. Well, pretty much. I mean, when when I got there. Pretty quickly, Channing gave me a smiley sling, uh, which, as I said, I've been using and it's been it's been really great. And then I gave him uh, one of the things that I made a little while ago. I made that one, but I thought that would be a good one for him because it's big enough to hold a baseball. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like, and then I was like, I bought a sling from Uve from Germany, and then um, I bought another sling from uh, Pepe from Malaga. Um, I know that Channing got one of his things as well, but it's, it, it is sort of like, we all, we all want to see what other people are making. We all like it, compare things. I brought some slings to compare with people and talk about them. And I was like talking with Uwe about how he does the, uh, the woven pouches he makes. And that was something that was great that Channing got out there because I know that you've put a lot of effort into making your sling and using particular knots for particular reasons. So being able to see what other people are doing, I thought would be great for you to, to see. So definitely, definitely, and all, on my channel, I always ask, you know, who got the best slings? Where can I get them? And I mean, you go out there and you see all of these really, like all the best slingers, pretty much make their own sling. You know, have their own style. And a uh, big shout out to Kick and his sling, man. This is a beautiful freaking piece of art, bro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like I said, like, like I, I don't even want to use these slings. They like they're so pretty, you know. One day I might go play with some tennis balls, not to mess them up. But uh, but yeah, just like Kick said, you know, all the slings he got, I think, I think I'm catching up with him. I'm waiting on one for Uber, and you know that that one he makes, it, it's so it's he, you can tell he takes a long time to make those slings. You have to. Even met my boy, shout out to Carlos. You know he came out there to the practice field. He is a lefty. You know I got one of his slings too. Um. You meet so many people out there. Uh, talk about the culture. This was pretty cool. We went to uh, we went to this thing where they showed us the traditional dancing, and the way the dudes used to dance with the women back in the day, they used to like shepherd them. Like a woman walks one way, he kicks in front of her. He starts clapping his little clapper thing, and it's like you see that. He's like, man, like this whole thing is founded on. You know, shepherds. You know what I mean? It's like that's some deep rooted stuff. Yeah, because that was when we went to. Um, I think that was on the next day. Uh, was that on the Saturday or the? Oh no, that was on the first. That was on the the first day when we opened the comp. Um, yeah, the first competition. Yeah, it was like so. We had an official opening where we had like these traditional dances. So, but as Chan was saying, it it is very obvious that they have this very long culture of shepherding and that sort of. Uh, showed in the dancing as well. Yeah, and like it's so traditional. I was, I think, uh, Chubby. I think he had a paracord sling too. You know, like there was there wasn't many of those out there. So bringing a different 
a different type of sling out there. It was uh, Yeah, how did people react to your sling? I'm curious about that. They liked it. I mean, first thing they said, they talked about the knot. They came in hot and heavy about the knot. They said, this knot at the end is no good. But, you know, I understand what they're saying, but I have a lot of slow motion videos that show Whenever the rock comes out the pouch, the 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 the, uh, the release cord doesn't wrap around the rock the whole way through. But besides that, everybody wanted one. Uh, when I showed them the adjustable pouch, they kept saying that's a new technology on the double finger loop with the slide or not. They liked it. They liked it. And even after the first day, when the Austria team seen them, you know they wanted to hurry up and buy some from it before everybody else seen them. So my goal, which my boy Kick did it for me. You know, he used my sling in the competition. But, like, next year it will be interesting to see if there's any any different type of slings, you know, because I feel like I introduced something a little different to them because there's enough of them out there. And pretty much the slings that I trade, I think Loki, Pepe, and Carlos, uh, yeah, I think three or four of them I traded out there, two sling makers. So I'm anxious to see if they change up any. Yeah, it was it was really interesting because, like, I can remember like when I first heard about your slings, I was like, oh, I I don't know if this is this is really like, do you need to do braided paracord? Can't you just use like the one string? And but actually, when you get one in your hands, it's it's really interesting to see how it works and that it really makes sense as a sling. So it was really interesting to see all these people have that ability to have one close up and look at it and give their opinion on it and. And stuff like that so yeah I, I, that's another great thing about this competition is that you get to meet people in person hold these different types of slings see what works like ask them how they do things like i i picked i picked up some tips on how to do uh braiding with fibers because i'm still not very good at that i still need a lot of work in, in, on that skill um but they, these are the people to ask they they do this and they have been doing it for a long time um, all these people from around the world, so they really know all the different tips and tricks. So that's part of the community aspect of it is that you get to meet people that really know what they're talking about and talk about things and discuss and change up what you're doing to really try and do the best. So it's a, a great thing. I did notice out there most of the slingers throw it, a, I will call it a 48 inch sling, but I guess it would be like a 24 inch sling, something around to your bicep or your elbow. You know, and I think with the Balearic style, uh, it works, you know, because that way you throw a little bit harder. But I don't know. The longest one I seen was uh, Pepe. He he got one that's kind of about 60, which I like to use. But I did notice that everybody had pretty short slings out there. Yeah, that's, that's sort of another thing is seeing what lengths people use, because it, that can vary a lot um, between individual people. But, yeah, I, I have noticed that in the Balearics, they do use what I would consider shorter slings than, than I usually use. And I've noticed that your sling, the, I, th I think was mine, the 60 inch. Yeah. The 60. Yeah. Yeah. So that's usually longer than I would use, but I've, I've already gotten quite used to using that, but yeah, compared to a lot of the Balearic ones, that is a, a lot longer. So that's another thing to sort of pick up on. <laughs> and that's one thing I was thinking, man, when I see you slinging with it in a, a competition, I was like, I bet you, I bet you, forty-eight will be be a lot better. It's for target practice. Good thing about that one, like the fun thing about that one is you can always turn around and just throw something as far as you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the difference. That forty-eight, you can only do so much. But that bad boy. But uh, yeah, and and I don't know. I might send you a short one. You go get it though, bro. <laughs> it uh, it's because it's different. It's different when I throw a natural sling. I feel different. So, you know, I guess, you know, you just got to get used to that bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> As is always the case with slinging, it just comes down to practice. So, Exactly. Exactly. Well, all right. Day three, 100% precipitation that day. <laughs> yeah. Day three was kind of a problem. Like, it already started raining in the morning, um, and we were supposed to be slinging rocks in the morning and then in the afternoon doing tennis balls again. But, um it quickly became apparent that we wouldn't be able to do rocks outside. Um, so we switched doing tennis balls first and then we would see if it would then clear up later. Um, so we went to this uh, indoor hall where they actually, 
it seemed that there was mostly an archery practice hall, which was pretty perfect because, you know, singing archery, eh, there's some similarities. There's lots of differences, which we will get to in its own episode. <laughs> but, um, but it was, it was, it was a good venue really for slinging. So we were slinging tennis balls in there and then it became more and more apparent as the day went on that we weren't going to be able to go outside and sling rocks at all. So we just stayed in and just did, uh, four rounds of tennis balls. So two rounds of five and then two rounds of five uh, com- counting as two separate competitions. But yeah, that was, that was actually kind of a good thing about that day was that we got to stay in the one place and just talk and, like buy slings and swap slings and talk about all the different things and we weren't moving around too much so we were just in the one spot that was quite good in a lot of ways that was also that day was the uh team event because we added up all of the individual scores to make a team and uh both me and channing found ourselves on team austria <laughs> yes <laughs> but uh but yeah, so that that was that was a lot of fun because those guys are really great. There's uh, Christian and Gerhard from Austria. They're they're really great guys to hang around with. So yeah, Christian basically invited us both to join Team Austria um, because he knew that we were nice people to hang around with. So it was it was a uh... well, wasn't wasn't he on Team Finlandia last year? Uh, no, actually, um, last year they they were Team Austria. I was on Team Finlandia with uh, Silvio uh, Jagor. Uh, he couldn't come this year, but um, he was uh, on Team Team Finlandia from Germany. And then we had uh, Jorn from Germany, who also didn't wasn't able to come this year. And um, uh, we also had uh, Zeva from Austria. He wasn't able to come this year either. And then Pete from England, who wasn't able to come this year either. So Team Finlandia was completely, <laughs> completely, uh, like broken up apart from me. So, uh, I had to go and find a new group. And luckily Christian was kind enough to let me on Team Austria. So I've got a shirt. Channing does as well. Uh, got our matching shirts, everything. It'll be Team America next year, baby. Well, yeah, this is the thing. I, I want to resurrect Team Finlandia and maybe just make it Team Swarmy. Finish for Finland, for those that don't know. Team Swarmy. Um, with some actual Finns, that would be quite good. Because, I mean, last year, technically Team Finlandia didn't have a single Finnish, men- <laughs> Finnish member. I, I'm British. I mean, I live here, but I don't even have citizenship yet. So it would be nice to have a Finnish team that's actually Finnish. So I'm working on that. There's some plans going ahead for that, maybe. Let's see. Hell yeah, yeah, you know, we gotta start now. We gotta start early. Yeah, yeah, and that, that was another good thing about the competition is that it's really, it it really is inspiring to see all these people coming together and making these things happen with slinging. So it's really sort of pushed me to actually do something about not having any slingers around because I've complained all the time. Oh, I'm the only slinger here in Finland. Really, there's not really anyone else around that I can go slinging with. And then made no effort myself to actually make more slingers or get people into slinging. So now's my uh, opportunity. I've I've taken it now as my goal to get Team Finland to the international. Hell yeah, Channing. In the in the last uh, talk we had, you talked about trying to organize something in the United States. Are you still thinking along those lines? Yeah, I'm working on it now, man. Every day at five o'clock, I'm at the park. And, uh, you know, I put it on Facebook and everything, try to get people to go out there. I even have an, another partner with a spot in the in the woods or a field where we could throw rocks and stuff. So I'm setting that up. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That would be another different environment. Right now, you know, I ain't really got too many people coming, but it's in its infant stages. I'm trying to take it slow, you know. But uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely coming to fruition. It's going to happen. But, uh, all right, let's just it will finish day three. And then we'll get into the uh, things. I, that's, I think the first round, that's the one I came in second place. That was that was fun, you know. Second place was pretty big for me. My best best round, which, once again, I know I could have did it better. And then the second one, that's when I came in third again. So, you know, that that was uh, pretty exciting times. We, uh, we parted, we, uh, I don't know, parted pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> Yeah, I celebrated a little too much, but uh some of us partied very hard. Uh but yeah. <laughs> you know, ever and everybody out there looked out for me, you know, I didn't break my trophy. Somebody broke one of these ceramic trophies. And uh 
I think I, all I did was just lose a placard off one. So I'm happy. I still got it. And, uh, you know, big shout out to everybody. <laughs> you were saying like you, you, you could have done better, but I mean, two third places and a sec and a silver. That's impressive. Like first ever competition ever. And you're already getting second place for the overall international, like men's groups. You're second in the world uh, for the one competition. That's pretty darn impressive hell yeah thank you man thank you and, and the, the only reason i say that is like like i said i went out to i think it was yesterday i went out there to the park and i was just playing around and it's like every score would have been a first place score you know what i'm saying it's like once you get up over that hill of nervousness yeah you know you, you get through it you know it's just like you don't think about every everything that you usually think about when you're not really worried about nothing you know but yeah First day I was excited to go, and the second day I was super excited. And I'm just looking at hindsight, you know what I mean? I'm I'm always the worst on myself because yeah, even even with that being said, you know, I did a lot of training. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's difficult to train for those actual competition setting though. It's 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 a very like we we're saying a very different thing to be up there in front of everyone slinging. So the fact that you did as well as you did is really impressive. Like I think I even said last episode, you know, I was just starting to figure out like it's more mental. It's a lot. It's a lot mental than I realized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and then now I realize, okay, it's you also got to think, but you gotta you gotta be able to work with a crowd. That's why this year I'm gonna be practicing with crowds all year. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to like with getting into sort of meeting some more people that might I can maybe get into slinging. I might be able to get that experience of slinging in front of other people especially if if it, i'm supposed to be then teaching them or showing them how to sling i think it's gonna be quite interesting to have the pressure of like you know i've got to make this look cool <laughs> to exactly. get them into it so exactly yeah. bro. So this, we done made it to another level you know we don't we did a youtube channel you know talk people some stuff on youtube and then we done went to the competition you know now we see what it really is and what it could be yeah you know I love to have a, a international competition in the states. You know that's that's you know the, the the biggest goal. You know, just to have a life that involves around slinging. You know, because I ain't trying to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, with those final uh, scores for that last day, I don't believe that they've actually been officially released yet. But I do think that I have heard that Team Austria won the overall Team Cup. So yet again, I managed to connect myself up with the best slingers to win for the team. So <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> number one, baby. <laughs> we we had some of the best slingers on it. Was oh wait, uh, Uwe as well. I I forgot to mention Uwe was also on Team Austria. So we had the number one in the world because he won, as far as I know. Uh, the overall cup and then was it was it that christian was second uh i think i don't really remember i know he got one yeah it, it got a little confusing at the end because you know they're, they're calling out all the scores with uh in various different languages <laughs> and uh which which scores matched up with which i'm not entirely sure but i do know that uve won overall um so he is now best in the world as it were yeah sling king yeah so and then uh our team austria uh won the overall team cup so we did pretty well i contributed a few points but i think there was uh some heavier lifting done by may maybe some of the other members but <laughs> but it was still fun all around so yeah it was great yeah yeah you, you was tagging that thing up too a couple of times a couple of times how many people overall were in the competition i don't if you were to guess, I think it was, I, I heard something like 120 or something. Was it that? I, I don't know. It's a little hard to say. And, and then also if they said, but they said 150, that's what was the number in the beginning, but you know, they might have exaggerated them numbers a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. There, there was some people that didn't compete in all of the competitions. Like I know that Louis, uh, Pons Livermore, he was only there for the rock throwing and then didn't come for the tennis balls later. So, uh, there were some people that were like coming in and out depending on on their availability, I guess. But it was around, I'd say, 
probably overall it was about 150 people um over the whole time we were there so yeah it's 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 a fairly big thing and and that's another really great thing about it is that like you were saying before the that there's a variety of ages and there's like little kids slinging and uh like older people and just the whole range of ages there and we didn't even talk about the women slingers really um the austrian women's team are a force to be reckoned with they yeah. they are really really good <laughs> they got some them some really good scores up there um particularly uh, miriam i know won at least a third a third place competition at one point and i think second second as well i can't remember the exact scores uh they're not all out yet so you know, i think when Uber won i think uh that woman won two redhead. Yeah, yeah, Mir- yeah, Miriam. Yeah, she got second place. I just looked. The those scores are up. Yeah, with the what did uh what did Uber win? Um, he he got second place with the tennis balls in in the little square. Oh, they don't have the rock the rock scores up. Um, let me just see. Uh, yes, he didn't win that time. Yeah, he didn't win anything that time. No. Huh. I'm not sure. I don't know. At least in these scores, it wasn't here. So, yeah. But to uh, answer your question in, in another way, uh, Nonk, uh, how long do you think is before, like, between rounds, kick? Like, when you do your first set to your second set, that had to be about 20, 30 minutes, huh? Yeah, probably about 20, 30 minutes. And, so, and there's the constant stream of people going up to sling their five five rock five rocks or five t- uh, tennis balls so there is quite a few people taking part it's it's not a it's not a small event in in a lot of ways there's there's a lot of people involved and that's the best part the best part is the in between round when everybody just kicking it watching it cheering each other on it's like that that right there it's like that's why I didn't get to record as much as I wanted to because I was so busy just socializing with people just you know Everybody out there's a trip, man. They like to have fun. <laughs> it is true. Like some of the best parts are when you're not actually slinging, when you're just sat, like stood around talking with people, and uh, like you're saying with with not filming as much as you wanted to. It's like that was the same for me. Is that every like with the last year that I went and this year, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to film like you know a variety of different people slinging, and then I just don't end up doing that because I'm too busy talking with people and you know, comparing slings. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. That's that's why we got to reproduce that. Yeah. You going out there next year? No. What's up, man? You coming? I would love to go. I'm not going to make any promises at this point, just because uh, life is pretty unpredictable for me right now. But, uh, but yeah, if I could, if I could figure out a way to get out there, I, I will definitely do that. Yeah. Best times. So I'm, I've also been, been trying to figure out how to bring slingers to Texas. And uh, have some ideas that I'm chewing on that would be something very, very different than a belly art competition. But uh, those are that's still in the works. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I've heard some of those ideas and I can say that, yeah, that it's, it should be pretty good if, if it can be pulled off. If so, it can be yeah. pulled off. Yeah. Think, think paintball with slings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it. But whatever you do, man, I could do back here. Like, we could start, you know what I'm saying? We could start some. Well, yeah, we we definitely should compare notes and coordinate and uh, uh, get some events going around the U.S. Definitely. So uh, we were talking to a friend of ours, uh, uh, John, who is trying to form a club, okay. and uh, out in California. And so that that's another strategy that I'm I'm watching very closely: the idea of forming small local groups and then building that into a, a national movement. That's that's what I'm doing. That's that's it, dog. You got you got to start a league and or like a group of club, and then once you get a group of people doing it, then you can advance. I know that that's the way that they're doing it uh, in Austria. Like Christian is like trying to get that together, where they now have a federation at this point because they have uh, two different uh, slinging clubs. So they now have a federation, and then they're uh, joining with the. Uh, Balearic Federation to try and make an international federation and in Guam they're doing the same thing they're trying to make it an official federation and with making official clubs and official federations you can then get some funding as well depending on where you are and you know things like that but I know in, in the Balearic Islands they 
really value it as part of their culture. So it they get some money from the government to help promote it and keep it going. So that's that's another thing is uh, and really when it all comes down to it, it's the main thing that it needs is is money and funding. So it's great to see that there are these sorts of movements are being supported in various areas. So like really organizing it and making these groups is probably the best way forward. Yep. And that's how we make it to the Olympics. You got groups like that all around the world, especially with federal funding. Yeah. Yeah. We're there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're all slingers here. We, we have been addicted to this for a while, but if anybody's listening out there, who's not a slinger, why would they want to get started in this? I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons. First, it's, it's a decent little workout, you know, get, get your cardio going. You know, people need to move around. It's not like you got to go run miles or nothing. You know, it's a nice little workout. And then there's like a always there's the mental aspect. You got to, you know, it's it hits different. It's, it's different than just go and play pitch and catch, you know, because it's like a like a golf or like a pool. You know, you got to you learn every time you go a little bit further. I learn this. I learn that. I learn stuff every day. You know, I just learned something yesterday, you know. And I mean. For, for protection, I mean, I you know that's probably the last reason you would need it or, or to go hunting or something. You know, I don't know how logical that is, but it's still you know something that can protect you. And who don't like shooting guns? If you like shooting guns, you got free ammunition, and it's pretty much just, you got a little pop at the end. You know, kind of like a little twenty-two. So it's fun on a bunch of different levels. Like I don't see why you wouldn't want to learn it. Yeah, they're definitely, you know, speaking as a Texan and uh, someone who does like shooting, it does scratch that same itch as going to the shooting range and, and making lots of loud noise, but it costs a lot less. It's generally safer if you, you know, I guess it depends on the rocks or yeah. you know, if you're using tennis balls, it's definitely safer, but it does, it does kind of scratch that same itch of launching things at, at things for fun. I think for me, another thing that I really like about slinging at the moment is that it's it's still quite a small sort of niche group of people that we, we will have our own little area that, 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 uh, on the internet, and we're wanting to spread it more, of course. But it's it's good at the moment that we have these like quite close ties with people. Like it, it's very easy to get in contact with some of the best slingers in the world currently um because we're quite a small group and so all very friendly with each other um we have a lot of these contacts that you know if i need help with something i can if i'm looking for some particular historical source i can ask christian from austria for example i know he knows his history you know channing he's he's really got that uh that that sort of overarm a technique down so i can ask him i can ask uh nook you know for uh, all sorts of different uh physics questions for example like you just have all these little connections with people that we all have this shared interest and shared hobby that we all want everyone to be doing more of and better at so it's a really nice close-knit community at the moment i think so that's something i've really enjoyed about. and the main reason really that i went this year for the competition last year i went because it was a new experience and you know i wanted to see what it was like being around other slingers and it really confirmed for me that it's really great to be hanging out slinging with other people like this year some of the best you know experiences there were when we were just training uh me channing the austrians and uh, vajasa from uh, uh lithuania as well was there slinging and we were all just hanging out chucking a few rocks at a target and it was great so it's that social aspect as well that is really sort of such a great thing and why it's really important that we promote that as much as we can now that we're back in our own respective countries amen bro amen bro perfectly said um you're right you're right that's that's a it's a rare thing to have such a a wide but small niche of people you know what i'm saying and yeah, yeah. you know it's just like just like uh let's say you get too big on a uh, youtube or something the comments go from being nice and friendly to pros you know what i'm saying and we took a, we took a, you know we, yeah. it's it's rare it's a rare niche we are and, and you're right the community is great and and we're very welcoming i think i think pretty much everyone that's into slinging the main thing they want is more people slinging. <laughs> like I've never met anyone that's like super 
like gatekeeping and saying, no, no, you can't get into sling. You have to do this and this. But like, basically, we'll accept anyone into slinging. So, you know, we're all very friendly and welcoming in that in that way. Yeah, and anybody listening, you know, what I'm saying, if you, you know, I throw a certain type of way, but if you got any questions, hit me up. I'll, I'll answer any questions you've got to my best knowledge. And even make a video about it. Same for me as well. Like, if anyone has any questions or wants advice or something, even if I, and that's the other thing, even if I don't know the best solution or best thing, I know some of the people that do know the best things, the best advice to give. So we will get you in contact. Well, you do run the best podcast on slinging in the world. Well, that's true. I I co I co-host it. It's not just me. It's not just well, me. Okay, that's fair, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but uh, but that's the thing. We can we can get you in contact with the people that know the answers, even if we don't know them. So yeah, we we have our contacts as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, and and so far, at least on the podcast, you know, we've we've mentioned, but we haven't really had a lot of interactions with the the Guam contingent, where there's a a whole other slinging culture. Uh, very similar in some ways, just well, similar in that there is a culture of slinging that's modern in Guam, but but there's a lot of slingers in Guam as well. Yeah, that's the next the next group that we need to uh, get in contact with. Yeah, because I I see they have competitions, but I, I need to figure out when and where and plan a trip out there, try to bring back some more hardware. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So if y'all listen to Guam. Let us know when it, when is when is it when's y'all biggest competition? And me and Kick will be there. I'll kick. Well, it's a little further to Guam for me. <laughs> oh no, Channing Channing has spoken. You've got to be there now. Oof. Okay, I'll I'll try and make it work. But that's a that's some long flights and interesting changes in flights. But let I'll I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Yeah, you know more than me. I'm a little reckless sometimes. <laughs> 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 that's why we keep you around yeah yeah but yeah I, we didn't give a full blow by blow account of everything that happened at the, the competition because it's it's a really i don't i think chaotic is a little bit too strong of a word but it's a little it's a little fast and loose maybe sometimes um and plans change there all the time and it's it's mostly just hanging out slinging you know meeting lots of new people um it all is over way too quickly the best thing to do really is rather than listen to us talk about it is to actually go out there and experience it because that's the best way of, uh, of really feeling the vibe. That's true. If any, if anybody, if anybody's in Louisiana, definitely uh, try to meet up with Channing. If anybody's anywhere near San Antonio, Texas, I will find a way to go slinging. That's cool. uh, same thing with Finland. I'm sure, I'm sure kick would, uh, I'll, I'll go since we've already obligated you to go to Guam. We'll also obligate you to go slinging. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm free any time, pretty much. If you're in the Helsinki area, send me a message, and I'll come and I'll bring tennis balls with me. You, if you don't have any of your own, I'll bring rocks as well. Uh, you know, uh, I'm up for slinging any time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> one more thing. I want, one more thing. We need to throw out there. Um, me and kick. We try to practice a little live stream yesterday. Live streaming with phones is pretty rough. So you have to like just get people to submit their round in the game instead of doing like a live one on one. Because I know we was talking about doing like an online competition, but everybody being live at the same time all around the world is going to be a little difficult. So just want to throw that out there. I filmed myself doing some rounds of of uh, tennis balls because I don't really have a good spot to set up a proper balearic target for throwing rocks but tennis balls i've found uh these nets nearby in the sort of sports area very near my home where i can clip clip up the big pan target that i've been using to be the diana and then put some string through the net to make the balearic uh board the 120 centimeters by 120 centimeters board and then i uh, film myself doing some rounds of that and there's a video on my youtube channel and it will be shown by Channing when we do this sort of online competition, but we're thinking that would be a good way of doing it is having pre-recorded rounds. So yeah, I think everyone should get involved in that. Just film yourself doing. And it's a lot, yeah, it'd be a lot easier because it's a lot easier to just put up a video or something you did than to go live. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are comfortable live. I'm trying to get comfortable with it myself. So 
you're standardizing on the Balearic uh, target size, and then what distance? If somebody wanted to to jump in and and post their own video, what's the distance you're throwing at? Thirteen. Thirteen meters. Okay. Thirteen meters. Yep. Yep. That's that'll, that'll be that'll be pretty tight. That's the good thing with the Balearic competition is that they've kind of standardized already uh, a pretty good way, I think, of doing at, le- at least a pretty good way of doing that style of target shooting. Uh, there's arguments made for different ways of doing slinging, like having moving targets or the person themselves having to move to reach targets. I think that could be quite interesting to do at some point. But for the moment, I think the Balearic rules of, you know, 13 meters and then a Balearic style target, I think is fairly doable for most people. If I have my way, you'll be moving also because you are the target. Well, yeah, that's that's the next thing, of course, is, yeah, paintball style stuff would be fantastic. So I'm waiting to see that come to fruition, definitely. Yeah, def- definitely need some development and uh, need to work out some details on that before before I'm going to tell people how to do it or that they should. But, uh, yeah, it's it's coming. Oh, uh, yeah. But like, if there's anyone listening that would l- would love to take part in that sort of online challenge thing, then if you don't have a Balearic target, I mean, just film yourself slinging anyway and send it over. I'm sure. Maybe we need to have some catch this branded targets printed or something. Yeah, something like that would be great. Might have to think about yeah, that. Yeah, some good early videos of uh, trophy winners of the next year's competition. You know, let's see what you got. You know, and you come out there, you do you do good. It all started from your one little submission. Well, you know what you're in Spain, coming back with trophies, living this, living this awesome experience. Yeah, definitely. Get us, even if it's just like, even if you think your slinging is bad now, it's really good to film yourself just to have a before and after, just to see what what's improved. If you film yourself and then look back a couple of months later, it can be really interesting. So, yeah, you you will appreciate that. I've I I have some really bad slinging videos of myself from a year or two ago, and I'm sure I'll feel the same way two years from now about what I'm doing now. Yeah, same for me. <laughs> I have some I, pretty I bad... So. I have some pretty bad slinging videos. <laughs> like, I want to learn after the competition, you know, I want to... I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to start off... I'm going to go back to a 48-inch sling, and I'm going to practice my Balearic style just to see... You know, it has its advantages and stuff, and now I don't have a competition soon I could kind of change my style and see if I could figure out how to aim that, you know, because I mean, they all pretty much throw that way and they throw the thing pretty dang on fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's true. It was slinging them things. So that's going to be one thing I'm going to do to just to test some things out, you know, and that's what slinging is. Always test some things out until you figure it out. And in the competition, I felt all the training I did, I felt like I'm glad I did it. Because I was able to adjust on the fly, you know what I'm saying, and like you can see, like when I'm when I'm watching somebody throw, what I'm seeing is the first throw, and how that compares to the second throw, and the, like you know what I'm saying, you can see people zoning in, and I was lucky to, I was able to zone in. I seen people just couldn't, they kept doing the same mistake, you know what I'm saying. I'm like, all right, so training helps. Yeah. You know, training helps even though you could train it all the time and you can go out there and not hit the target. You just always got to think about what you're doing to get better fast. Yeah. Yeah. So you should uh, make sure that you're all subscribed to Channing, uh, Practical Paracord on YouTube. And then you can send over all of the videos, I guess, to him <laughs> that you make <laughs> or, you or send it to us or, you know, hear it. Feedback at Catch This. Yeah. So we've we've got a, a a silly thing where we've got it set up with a wild card. So honestly, you could send it to Banana and catch this podcast, and it would still get to us. <laughs> yeah, or uh, or Channing at practicalpowercore dot com. Email it to me there. Uh, any one of my videos, just look in the links. I got all my all my ways you can get in touch with me: Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, man, send your videos in and. And it'll, it'll be a fun. It'll be a fun game. Might even have a a, a prize or something. Like that. that sounds great. I'll put up a smiley sling. And that's a good prize, I can say. I've, I've that used is one. a good prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, for for Kick and myself, I think probably the we're probably the most active on Instagram of all the social media. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, but yeah, email email works. Um, you know, Kick and Kick and I both have YouTube channels. I have um, I've neglected mine for the most part lately. 
I use mine sporadically, but yeah, I mean, probably the best to send it to at catch underscore this underscore podcast on Instagram. Um, then we can. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. You'll be able to get it to so that everyone can see. Or just that we can see if you're just wanting advice. We don't have to post it if you don't want or, it. Or just to entertain us because we, we could yeah. we'd be happy for the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I never get tired of seeing slinging videos. So even if you just want to show off, it's fine. <laughs> and and want tips and pointers too, you know. If you have yeah. an issue that you're having, put it with the video and we'll answer. Or, yeah. or give us tips and pointers. We want to know what we're doing wrong too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, tell us what what, what we're doing wrong. I, I want to come back with some trophies as well sometime. Uh, <laughs> I get enough of that. <laughs> All right, well, this is probably a good place to wrap it up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Talk what an hour and a half. Man. Easily, yeah. I want to have more too. I'm just trying to keep it in the vicinity of Balearic, the Balearic games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what's great about having you on is that, yeah, good good person to talk to makes it nice and easy to make a podcast. <laughs> As always, great to have you on, Jenny. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, though. You know, great time in Spain once again. Kicked it with Kick, a.k.a. yada, 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 yada. We, got it. Yeah. And, uh, we, just, we just had a good time, man. Great experience. Can't wait to do it next year. Yeah, it's going to be really great. Okay, I guess we can uh, cue the outro. Well, hang on. Before we do that, do we want to talk about what the next episode is going to be at all? Do we want to mention that? Uh, oh, yes. Ah, that's a good point. It's an interesting one, Next, the next episode. So, yeah, for the next episode, we're going to try and do something a little bit different, and we're going to try to compare the sling to something that everybody... We, we actually said a few episodes back that we were going to do this. We're going to do a sling versus slingshot episode, and uh, we have a very special uh, guest on to talk about that. Uh, that some people might know about. Uh, they might have heard of a gentleman by the name of Fowler from Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Damn, you got him on? We got Fowler on, and we got to talk slingshots with Fowler and compare the sling to the slingshot. And you, people may not know that Fowler is also a slinger uh, because he's he's branded himself around the slingshot, but uh, had a really great conversation with Fowler. We've already recorded that, and uh, so it's, it's coming soon. That's going to be tight. Yeah, that's tight, man. Cool as hell. So yeah, we're I'm excited about uh, about dropping that episode. I don't know when this one's going to drop, but uh, after this one, that's going to be our our next episode to drop. So it's going to be a fun one. That's tight as hell, man. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, tell a friend, and when you do, tell him that notification bell. Ding. <laughs> it, it's almost like you've said that before. <laughs> All right, now we can cue the outro. Thanks for listening. You can find us online at catchthispodcast.com, on the sling.org forum, on YouTube, and at catch underscore this underscore podcast on Instagram. Music by Wintergarten. Catch you next time.